you know, one of my basic philosophies is government only exists to do things that people can't do for themselves. So our federal government, one of its primary responsibility is the safety and security of our country. We can't all go hire our own army, right? So we come together as a country and say we're going to have an army. As a state, there are certain functions we provide that people can't buy for themselves. I mean, they can't, you can't go buy your own prison system and your own school systems, your own system of higher education or a mental health network, all, all those things you can't do for yourself. And so that's what you hire government for. And everything else that we possibly can, we leave to private enterprise because we think they can do it better. But no business can build a highway system. You just can't. And no individual can. I don't care who you are. I don't, you can't do that. We, we, this government has to do this. So this is our most basic function. Uh, and in Tennessee, we've done a really good job of being a conservative state, of being that state, like I said, with no road debt. And as we look at this, I won't, I won't propose toll roads, and no, nor will I propose going to debt, using debt. Our parents and grandparents handed us a system without debt, and we're enjoying that. We owe the same thing to our kids and grandkids. But it's also not conservative, and like I said, we, our French farm door here, it's not, if I have a family farm and it came from my grandparents and my parents to me, and uh, I got it in good shape, uh, and then I get ready to pass on to my kids, and even though I know that the pond won't hold water anymore, and the barn leaks when it rains, and the HVAC system in my house doesn't work, but I'm not really willing to pay to fix those things, but I give it on to my kids, say, hey, great news, you got, you got the farm with no debt. Well, it really does have debt, right? Because you got to fix all those things. And so, to me, being conservative is taking care of what we have and paying for our share of it now and then giving it to the next generation like we got it. So, I'm committed to finding a solution to doing that. Uh, and I'll end with this. There's a reason why you get here. By the way, Tennessee, there's only three states that have gone longer without a business <coughs> than Tennessee. But there's a reason. And I, I figured, you know, you figure it out when you get in office. You come in your first term as governor and you look around and you go, whew. This looks hard. It's hard to pick, pull off. That feels like a second term initiative. And uh, uh, those, of, those of you in elected office know exactly what I mean. And so you say, that'll be a second term initiative. Then you get in the second term and you hear Paul or somebody like Paul say, oh, by the way, it's it, it's an eight year project. And you go, well, eight years from now, that's somebody else. I'll let somebody else figure out how to get this done and you pass it on to the next person and, and move on. But I, I just, don't think that's right. Don't think it's fair. So these are never easy conversations to have, but I do think they're responsible conversations to have. And I'm very grateful for all of you all being here and being a part of this. Like I said, it's interesting to me in this conversation, some of the people who can be impacted by the most, whether you're a farmer or a trucker or others, are the people who are at the front saying, we've got to address this problem. And to me, that's that's actually both enlightening and encouraging when you have that. So. I think the more you talk about this, the more people understand the need. You know, in general, when you talk about changing the way we pay for anything, nobody likes that idea. But when you explain, hey, you're actually paying 30 to 50 percent less to drive on our roads than you did 20 years ago, and those roads cost twice as much to maintain and build, people understand that, that you just can't keep going that direction and have it work forever. What is kind of driving this in, this inflation and costs and construction well, costs and everything? I mean, look, most things... Uh, uh, to, to cost to build more than, you know, that, that's about what things have, have gone up in the last 20 or 30 years since we uh, changed paying for this. Second, I mean, a lot of what goes into the cost of building roads is petroleum based uh, because asphalt is an oil based product. So, so a lot of it is that. Some of it's just, uh, you know, construction is probably double now what it was 25 years ago. And, and right now, roads are funded almost solely, solely by the gas. By, we, we, we pay for roads through gas tax, and that's all that gas or diesel tax goes toward. So it's really funded separately from our general fund budget, and that's another reason people don't understand it, because when we argue about the budget in the General Assembly, these these issues typically aren't discussed because they are funded separately. So does it make sense to continue relying solely on the gas tax? Well, I think it does. I mean, I think one of the reasons it does is, you know, a lot of people have said, well, we should, you know, just take, we have a surplus this year in the general fund, let's take that money and use it to fund roads. But the projects are so big in transportation that we can ne we can never do that out of our general fund budget. So we have one road project in Memphis, uh, which is the biggest need we have in the state. That just by itself, is 270 million dollars. That's one road uh, project to fix Lamar Avenue in Memphis. You do that all across the state, and you realize the severity of the issue.